I'm Lindsay Smith with Real Ag Radio and realagriculture.com, and I'm joined now by Dr. Ed Gregorich. He's a soil research scientist at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada based in Ottawa. Welcome here, Dr. Gregorich. Thank you. Nice to be with you ta- talking today. Now, you have, uh, I, I'm learning all sorts of things today, but I'm, I want to specifically talk about one of the long-term studies, but I've learned there are several long-term studies you're involved with, but I want to talk about the long-term soil study that we're starting to glean some 10-year data on. So set the stage for me. What is this, what is this large-scale uh, data study? Yeah, it's a study to look at what we call the litter decay study, litter, plant litter, plant residues or the straw that's left over after crops are harvested. We wanted to look at that process in as many different soils and climatic conditions as possible. So we established this study uh, at 10 locations in the agriculture region across Canada. And we, um, so this uh, extends from Fredericton, New Brunswick to Breton, Alberta, from um, southern Ontario to, well, Breton, which is northern Alberta, uh, across a wide range of soil types with different texture, pH, and of course the climate is quite different across that whole range. It goes from about 400 millimeters a year out in uh, Swift Current to over 1200 millimeters per year, so a threefold difference in precipitation. Uh, out in in uh, Fredericton, where we, they get lots more rain than Alberta, so so we got these sites and we set up exactly the same experiment across all of those sites. Uh, so and we applied the same type of material, and in this case it was barley straw that we added, and we wanted to see how fast it breaks down and which factors would control the breakdown, how fast that decay process would would happen, and if all of these different soil properties would have an effect on it. So we've been running it. It started in 2007, so we've passed the 10-year mark now. We're going into tw- year 12 of the study. And occasionally, every couple of years, we have sampled and collected the soil, and then we, we measure. We, we, when we started it, we put a compound into the plant material that we could trace. It was a heavy isotope. So we can trace that and accurately quantify how much of that original residue, how much of the original straw remains in the soil. Even now, after 12 years, we can pick up that signal. So, so what, what, hang on. Just, yeah. So do you mean to tell me that you can, is there still residue or it's the remnant of that residue that, that you can still detect 10 years out or yeah. 12 years out? It's obviously not the plant material anymore, but it's the soil organic matter. That that process from uh-huh. the plant material to this humus substance is what we're talking about. When we talk about decay, there is some that's lost. It's um, lost as carbon dioxide. The carbon that's there is lost as carbon dioxide as the earthworms and the fungi and bacteria break it down. They incorporate some of that into their bodies. They release some of that as a gas, as CO2, back to the atmosphere, and some remains in the soil. And that's what we're picking up is that carbon is traced back to the original plant straw. So we can quantify that, but it is not plant material anymore. Mm-hmm. It's different. Very cool. It's this humus material. It's, it's, there's a lot of chemical compounds that make it up, but we're just talking about the carbon. So that's mm-hmm. representative of that whole residue. So, Okay. And so, um, as you said, I mean, you're, you're moving on to year 12 of this. And what, have, what are some of the major conclusions from sort of this first 10 years? Well, as I said, I was expecting um, that the, the texture would be different. Like I said, we go from 10% sand to 90% sand at these sites, so wide range in texture, different pH, different climatic, different precipitation. I would have thought that some of those would have would have well that they would play a factor in it. But when we did the analysis and when we we did the uh, mathematical statistical analysis of the data, there was one thing that controlled the rate of decomposition, the rate of loss or change in that carbon that's in the residue, and it was temperature. Mm. Temperature is the main driving variable that to explain that whole process. So much for it so that across all 10 sites, 94% of the variability that we see across the sites and across the climatic regions can be explained by temperature. And that really was sort of surprising to me. So. And that was the big finding of the study is that when we look at temperature, and what this allows us then to do 
is it makes it easier to predict or model this process in soils across Canada. And the organic material that's going in, the straw, as, as farmers will know, the straw going into the soil is important for all sorts of things, primarily with the soil health, the soil carbon buildup. It feeds the organisms in the soil. It releases other nutrients. I'm, I, I talk about and measure carbon, but there are nutrients in that plant material that's being released in this process as well. So all, all of that, that biological process can be explained simply using temperature. You would just use a calculation to measure the cumulative amount of temperature, how much thermal energy has gone in, and that explains that process. And so how do we, when we, so bringing this, this home, I mean, as you mentioned, there's, of course, different factors of the soil, of the crop types you're growing, all of those are going to influence sort of, you know, your soil health and the productivity of that soil. But when we're talking specifically about sort of that carbon cycle, it's driven by temperature. So what does this mean as potentially you enter, let's say for one area, a very cold spell or a much warmer average temperature? Well, we know that temperature is warming year by year across the country, and I guess it's it's inevitable. It's it sort of a, a keeps going. Every year we see higher and higher temperatures. We will go through periods like we are right now in in Ontario. It's a little bit of a cold spell, but on average, if we take the average temperature over the year, it's generally increasing and has been increasing over the uh, year. So climate warming. Climate change is occurring. There is a warming effect. So what that means is that process that change is going to speed up the biological processes in the soil. And it's going to increase it It's sort of exponentially. It, it doubles with warmer temperatures, it's even higher. So when we look at the warmest site in our study and compare it, and that's in southern Ontario, and compare it to um, northern Alberta, um, if it warms uh, at the same amount at both of those locations, we get even a greater loss in the warmer site. So it's sort of a compounding effect. So what that means is as we go into a warmer future, uh, it will be harder to um, build the organic matter levels in soil. And I mean, I was talking about the modeling and so forth, but th for the farmer, I guess at a practical level, it means that he, it will be important for them to make every effort that they can to put as much organic matter into the soil as they can. They want to make sure that uh, every bit of their straw and everything goes back into the field and supplement wherever they can in order to build up organic matter levels in the soil as much as they can. Uh, because this process is sort of something we can't really control. This is out of our hands. I mean, you might get a short-term uh, period of coolness, but when it warms back up to the normal time, it catches up then. The process sort of catches up and that there is an extra release of, of the carbon. So we're kind of behind the eight ball. We have to keep uh, um, uh, trying to stay ahead of this, trying to keep as much organic matter and be conservative of that organic matter as much as we can. We have to keep, I guess that's the thing, is keeping our eye on, on organic matter levels in the soil is, is going to be really critical in the future. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and, you know, as someone who, you know, has lived out west and, and dealing with sort of how we build organic matter there and then coming to Ontario, like you mentioned, that, that, that temperature difference and burning through that crop residue, it's, it's quite amazing to see just how, how quickly that can happen. And so, as you mentioned, and I think that's the key part here is that what this means is exactly that, that building that organic matter just becomes more difficult the warmer right. the temps are. Um, that's right. Right. And so I, I think that's a really key question then to ask is, okay, then how do we build that organic matter? Or like you said, conserve it, right? And so, yeah, yeah and we have to sort of be answering that question now, not five years from now. Um, That's right. Yes. Yeah, because we know that change is coming. I, I still, it's, it's important to keep your eye looking to the future with this, because you, if you know something is coming or things are going to change consistently over the future, then keeping your focus on what's important will be, will be all that much more important. You mm -hmm. know, the and organic matter is sort of the central part of soil health health and carbon storage and so forth so that that's keeping your eye on that is important mm -hmm. and it's uh it makes sense for the bottom line too right feeds our crops mm -hmm. grows our yields absolutely all right that's dr right. Greg gregorich thank you so much for joining me today you're welcome thank you